All these Kindle videos are ass. Let me show y'all some real Kindle. All right, so the first thing that we're going to be going over is movement. Starting us off is wall scaling. You can either jump melee, look up and clap, jump clap, or even wall jump into clap. Special things to know about this is that if you want to clear a greater height, then you have to let yourself reach the max jump height first. Any of the clap options can then go into air melee to secure clearing buildings or obstacles as it acts as an additional jump. Air melee can also be delayed in order to direct better where you want to go and if you may need to get closer to whatever it may be. So after the clap, you're able to DI being directional input and then go closer to a ledge into air melee. Next up, we got ledge boosting. Ledge boosting is rolling off the ledge and then doing air melee. This can be done off of any ledge. The reason why this is extremely good is because if you get good with knowing when to jump and being able to land on any of the ledges around the map, be it the brick wall, be it any of the fences or anything like that, then you're going to be ledge boosting all over the place, being able to boost your speed and get around the map much faster. Following that, we have hill boosting. In order to hill boost, you have to sprint, instant jump air melee, and then you repeat. Now, the special thing about this is that you have to hold down your sprint button during the instant jump air melee, or else when you land, you're not going to go back into a sprint, even if you have sprint toggled. All right, so lastly, we have alpha gliding. In order to alpha glide, you're going to sprint, jump, use her shield, and then alpha once you see the yellow flash from her shield come out. Now, even though her shield flashes, you are still able to block incoming damage while doing this. The reason why this alpha gliding is different than traditional alpha gliding just by sprinting, jumping, using alpha, automatically going to a sprint, jump and repeat is that this one actually covers more ground. So if you're trying to escape and you need to glide a longer distance, then this is what you want to do with Kendo. All right, so moving on over to combat, we're going to first talk about something that's extremely important when it comes to Kendo and handling combat, and that's understanding the neutral. Understanding the neutral is understanding how to exactly use her shield when people are either pressing you or even running away, and how you are able to press others while using her shield. A lot of people don't know what to do when people are running at you while you have the shield up because you don't feel like you are able to do anything. But during this time, you are able to use your options of using the shotgun rocks, able to go for a melee, or even go in for a cheeky clap. Now, if people are just pressing you by staying you know, away, a Bakugo is shooting at you, then the best thing to do is not to take so much shield damage because you want to avoid your shield breaking. Once your shield breaks, it's not gonna be able to come up until the cooldown is done. So if you wanna get good with Kendo, then you heavily, heavily, heavily have to understand the neutral and how to play it correctly. Now to talk about the special things to know about combat specifically. First off, Kendo can actually block melee attacks without taking shield damage. As I call it, you can either do an alpha counter or you can do a parry. In order to alpha counter, you're going to end up meleeing as your shield is actually about to get hit. In order to do a parry, you're going to do the same thing, but you're actually going to roll into the attack. So for both of these, you're going to be holding your shield, hold the shield button down, and from holding the shield button, then you're able to do any other action, that being attacking or even rolling. So you want to time it just right and be able to go for a melee or a clap or even a roll. The next thing to know is that Kendo lunges forward a pretty good distance when meleeing. It's about five spaces in length. So instead of having to try and run up on somebody within hugging distance in order to go for a melee, take advantage of the fact that she can have distance in between you and your opponent and surprise them by dashing forward for a melee. Now let's say that they actually try to roll. If they're rolling everywhere, rolling everywhere, rolling everywhere, then what you can do, you can continue resetting the first auto attack in order to try to catch them because you're going to continue dashing at them, dashing at them, dashing at them. And eventually you can catch their roll if you time it right. Continuing off the topic of spacing, her alpha has a pretty consistent hit rate from about eight spaces away but it has a max range of 12 spaces. So just like her melee attack, instead of trying to get up close and personal and thinking that that's the only way that you're going to land her shotgun shots, it's not. So remember that you can be about eight spaces away and if they're 12 spaces, then you can get a little bit of chip damage in. Something else special to know is that you're going to be hitting four rocks maximum. That's going to be her maximum damage. So whatever number you see, times that by four and that's how much damage you're actually doing. 
Alright, so lastly before we get into combos, her clap has a range of 11 spaces when it's maxed. Otherwise, you're going to be capped at 9 spaces until then. So if you are playing the neutral and you see that they're at that range, you can go in for a surprise attack with the clap because you're going to be able to cover it. Something special to know about this is that if you want to clap in a specific direction and you want to alleviate being pulled by auto targeting, then all you have to do is aim and you're able to clap in whatever direction that you want. That way you aren't forced to clap in the direction of an opponent. Alright, so now to get into these Kendo combos, I'll be addressing each part of her attacks as 1, 2, 3, and 4. Starting off, the basic thing to know is that you can land 5 hits based off of her first attack. So you can do 1, 1, 1, 1, and 1. From that, you can do any type of mix that you want, be it 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, etc, etc. Moving on, if you want to do 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, that's going to give you 87 damage plus a hard knockdown. Even though this doesn't give you much damage, the reason why this is good is because a lot of the other attacks are either going to leave you negative or it's going to launch them in the air, allowing them to tech in the air and then being able to do whatever else in the air, be it escape, be it a reversal attack or whatever the case may be. So you're able to do this hard knockdown and then still be able to cause mix up or do whatever that you want to do based on their wake up. Next up, you have 1-2, one, 1-2 two, one, two, alpha. This is going to give you 68 base damage along with however much alpha damage you do plus a team follow up. The reason why this combo specifically is really good is because any projectiles, be it like Bakugo's beams or Deku shots uh, when he's not crouching or even like uh, Todoroki shots, anything that's ranged pretty much is going to not cause knockdown fatigue so while you're doing one two one two into your alpha your teammates are able to beam whoever you're hitting and typically you're going to go into a ko combo if you're doing any of the other combos you're going to end up hitting them out of it or if any other melee attacks say if your teammate tries to come in and land one cheeky hit they're going to end up messing up the combo so if you have teammates on your team that can beam say if you have like an uraraka that can go into uh go into like her gravity lift or you have again a Todoroki being able to shoot people you want to do a one two one two into alpha note though if you do do this combo it will leave you negative so if a bakugo has his gamma and he's able to do that spinning fire wheel thing that he does then he is able to hit you after you shotgun him so only do this if you know that you can confirm any attacks or if they've already used it that way they can't do a reversal or hitting characters like dobby who don't necessarily have a reversal Lastly, you can use this as a mix up if you don't think that they're going to do a reversal at all. However, in my experience, anytime I've gone for this combo, I get slapped right in the face because people are trying to mash out of the combo. The next combo is very basic. It's her bread and butter. You're going to do one, two, three, four, and make sure that you're holding forward because that's the way that you're going to recover the fastest out of her one, two, three, four animation. From this, once you launch them in the air from Palm Strike, then you're able to throw out Alpha. This is going to give you 129 base damage along with however much Alpha damage is doing once you level it up. Now, this combo only works on Flesh, Flesh being when you're hitting for raw HP. If they have Shield, you're not going to be able to follow up with Alpha and they are going to be able to tech out of it before the Alpha ends up hitting. So make sure that you are hitting this on Flesh Otherwise, don't throw out your alpha because they are going to have a safe air tech on shield. Now to lastly talk about her air combos. The first combo has to be done on flesh, in which case it's going to be air melee, one, two, into gamma. That's going to give you 91 base damage, plus however much gamma damage you have at the time. Now when doing this, if you end up doing it on shield, you're not going to be able to launch them. That's why it's important to do it on flesh. Both of these combos, be it the air melee one, two or air melee one, two, three, in which case we'll talk about here shortly can also go into alpha. So say if you don't have gamma at the time, you can do air melee one, two alpha air melee one, two, three. Both of these work both on shield and off shield being hitting for flesh raw HP. So now the other combo that we're talking about, that's going to be air melee into one, two, three. That's going to give you 110 base damage plus a hard knockdown. The reason why this hard knockdown is good, as said previously, is that they're not able to air tech and you're able to follow up with whatever you wanna do while they're on the ground, while they're recovering, if you wanna run at them, 
jump up in the air, shield, try to throw some alpha at them once their invulnerability runs off, or whatever the case may be. If you don't want to finish it with 1, 2, 3, as we said, the other combo route would be 1, 2 into alpha. So overall, the three air combos, technically speaking, would be air melee, 1, 2, gamma. If you're hitting for flesh, then if you're hitting for either flesh or shield, then you could do air melee, 1, 2, alpha, or air melee, 1, 2, 3.